Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, thank you to the organizers uh, for having me. Um, where's the, uh, this one? Okay. <laughs> Uh, libraries within the library, uh, Bibliotheken in der Bibliothek, is the title of a paper by Brigitte Klosterberg, director of the Franke Foundation Study Center in Halle. She refers to the circumstance that the historical library of the Halle orphanage has grown largely through bequests and donations. Many of these libraries within the library have already been catalogued uh, in detail in recent years. One part of the collection, however, has not yet been processed due to the a uh, complex situation of its preservation and historical record, namely the library of the former Institutum Judaicum et Muhammedicum. Um, by library, I mean the Institute's collection of both printed books and manuscripts, which originally uh, formed the unit and as such also found their way into the library of the uh, orphanage. Uh, for methodologi methodological reasons, I would like to examine both prints and manuscripts uh, together. Uh, in my contribution today, I, uh, I would like to offer a, a very, very first approach to this collection, which is so far only known very uh, superficially. Uh, the aim at this point is not to provide a detailed analysis of the collection, for example, on the topics or, or languages represented. Rather, I'm trying to answer some very basic questions. Where, who, uh, how, and what for? Halle, and in particular the orphanage, uh, founded by August Hermann Franke in the suburb of Glaucher, were in the 19th century the center of so-called Halle pietism, a Protestant movement with global ambitions. These ambitions also gave rise to the pietists' intense interest in the religions of the MENA region and their languages. In 1728, Johann Heinrich Kallenberg founded the Institutum Judaicum et Muhammedicum. It was uh, independent from the orphanage and mainly financed by donations. Kallenberg also taught oriental languages uh, as a professor at the University of Halle. At the institute, missionary prints were produced in a variety of languages, including Arabic, Turkish, Persian, Hindustani, Greek, Hebrew, Yiddish. Uh, other printing programs, for example, Armenian and Ethiopian, did not get beyond the planning stage. Prints were distributed to the target audiences, that is, Jews, Muslims, and Oriental Christians, through itinerant staff and an extensive network of middlemen. Under Kallenberg's successors, uh, Stefan Schulz and Justus, uh, Justus Israel Bayer, the institution continued to exist until uh, 1792. The question since when the institute had its own library is connected to the question of Kallenberg's uh, own private library. The institute's library also included books and manuscripts uh, that Kallenberg owned before the establishment of the institution. These include, for example, the manuscripts from the context of his collab collaboration with two Oriental Christians that came to Halle as language teachers, uh, Salomon Negri and Carolus Ralida Dishi, which uh, Simon Wills uh, will discuss later in the conference. After the founding of the Institute, some sort of hybrid collection seems to have developed in the early 1730s uh, from Kallenberg's originally private holdings, which now was both institutionally affiliated and a professorial scholarly uh, library. Books found their way into the library under all three directors, with the majority of the tangible stock probably coming together under Kallenberg. At this point, um, another library um, must be brought into view. Stefan Schulz, who was for many years a traveling employee and later became director of the Institute himself, had his own private library, which seems, which seems to have been far more extensive than that of the Institute. It was auctioned off after his death in 1777, uh, and the following questions arise. Did Schulz take books from the Institute's original holdings into his own library? Did books intended for the Institute enter his private library under his directorship? I can't give an uh, accurate answer yet. Uh, a clue in this regard is offered by an interleaved copy of Abraham, Abraham Hinkelmann's Quran edition, which goes back to Kallenberg's Quranic uh, studies with Negri in Dadishi. Oluf Gerhard Tüchsen, formerly himself an employee of the Institute and then professor of Oriental languages in Bützow, purchased this volume from Schulz's estate at auction. In addition, there are many other prints and manuscripts in the auction catalog that can be linked to his activities uh, for the Institute and in particular to a journey he had made to the Ottoman Empire. I will come back to this later with reference uh, to some manus manuscripts. Given its long history, hardly any details can be de determined about the physical location of the library. Immediately before it was taken over by the orphanage, it was housed in a room 
with two windows in a building owned by this institute on the street Großer Berlin in Halle, close to the synagogue. When the institute was dissolved in 1791-92, by order of the Prussian government, all its possessions were passed on to the orphanage. The library, including the manuscripts, was placed in the shelves 129 to 134 of the Kulissen Bibliothek, shown in the picture, um, after holdings deemed unimportant were auctioned off. The majority of these books are still in the shelves today. However, the manuscript collection was transferred to the archive somewhere later. In addition, there are indications that other books in unknown quantities were placed in other shelves uh, of the Kulissen Bibliothek. As far as I can trace so far, including the manuscripts, a little more than 700 volumes were taken up in the library of the orphanage. Originally, the library probably contained a little more than 1,000 volumes, whereas Schultz Library contained about 1,600 um, volumes. Um, and I think the, the Oriental manuscripts make up a range from in the, in the low, low, no double digit range. Um, uh, and most of the uh, uh, manuscripts we still have are edited already by um, Erika Papst. Kallenberg had a good knowledge of and was an active observer of the book market. He used various uh, sources of information. The, lit the literature he consumed, of course, advertising media from uh, the book trade, auction catalogues, and also his extensive communications network. For example, he wrote to an unnamed friend in Venice to inquire about the program of Antonio Bortoli's printing house. Could you furthermore obtain information about what is being printed in the Greek printing house and get the titles of the newly printed books? I would appreciate it. The ways in which books and manuscripts came into the Institute's library were also manifold. Substantial parts of the collection came into the possession of the Institute as donations or bequests. At this point, I could mention several concrete names of donors, but most of them are relevant only for a narrow circle of pietism researchers, I guess. Of interest to you might be, for example, Georg Heinrich Werndli, professor of uh, Oriental languages in Lingen, who himself had worked as a reformed missionary in Dutch East India. Among his numerous donations was the Historia Saracenica, edited by Thomas Erpenius. A copy of Rudimenta Linguae Arabicae by uh, Leiden Orientalist Albert Schultens was donated to the Institute by the author himself. Among the donations were also various manuscripts. I would like to give you a few examples as well. The Ottoman Turkish manuscript Q52, uh, as shown here, uh, contains a register of benefices of the province of Ofen. It was donated to the Institute by the medalist Christian Wermut from Gotha. Benjamin Schulze, mission, missionary of the Danish-English Halle mission in, East, in the East Indies, uh, gave to the Institute uh, a Hindustani translation of the Psalter written in Latin letters uh, as a means of learning to read the translation printed in Arabic letters. As Kallenberg noted, this manuscript seems to be lost. Uh, and an unnamed friend, uh, friend is a term for the supporters of the, of the Institute, uh, who had been to Asia and Africa donated quite a few oriental letters to the library. Unfortunately, I could neither find these letters nor identify the person who donated them. While the library did not serve to store the Institute's own publications, the sources do provide a very insightful look at the production of manuscripts in oriental languages at the Institute. Stefan Schulz, as a member of the Institute's traveling staff, uh, had borrowed a Malay manuscript from the aforementioned Wernli, which the letter had brought with him uh, from uh, Dutch East India. Uh, the author's name, uh, Schulz writes, uh, is Shamsuddin ibn Abdallah, and the treatise consists of 211 questions to which the answers are appended. Um, this copy of uh, Mirat al Muminin uh, by Shamsuddin ibn Abdallah. Samatrani is now preserved in the library of the uh, stolberg Wedingerode family in Hirzenhain. Stefan Schulz also began to write something he called a short epitome of theology in Arabic. Unfortunately, this manuscript seems to be lost uh, as well. So as you maybe see, uh, what I'm trying to do is not to only uh, work with the manuscripts we have, I want to find out what is lost, which is a completely new perspective on this library. Um, in addition, of course, Kallenberg also bought books on purpose for example at auctions and he searched his communications, networks, communications network for titles of interest to him. Of particular importance for the procurement of books and manuscripts, however, were the trips of the Institute's staff. 
uh, in a recently published article, uh, I discuss, uh, for example, how they uh, purchased prints of the Sacra Congregatio de Propaganda Fide uh, in and on Oriental languages in uh, Rome. But today, I would like to focus very briefly on another journey, namely the journey of uh, Stefan Schulz and Albrecht Friedrich Woltersdorf to the Ottoman Empire from 1752 to 1756. During this journey, uh, the colleagues acquired quite a few books and manuscripts. Uh, in their language studies, especially of the Turkish and Arabic language, uh, they copied texts, made excerpts from dictionaries and so on. Now the question arises as to the whereabouts of these prints and manuscripts. In fact, there are only a few remains in the collections of the Franke Foundations. The travelers regularly sent boxes with the diaries, print, printed books, manuscripts, and other objects to Halle. In the library, there exists a, a book which probably came to Halle uh, with such a shipment. It was donated to the Institute by the Dutch uh, Chancellor in Smyrna, Johann Friedrich Mann. In the Kunst- und Naturalienkammer of the Franke Foundations, the passport of Schulz and Woltersdorf, which they used in the Ottoman Empire, is exhibited, as well as a Turkish letter, which Schulz is said to have uh, brought back from the journey. And at the beginning of the 19th century, copies by the travelers of an uh, Arabic Italian dictionary, which they got from the Capuchin Library in Cairo, uh, were still in the collection of the Franke Foundations, but are now lost. Um, a box containing Turkish, Arabic, Persian, and Armenian manuscripts, among other things, did uh, not reach its destination, but sank with a ship off Texel. Today, at the Leiden University Library, exists an uh, extensive collection of oriental manuscripts which originate from this um, voyage. Unfortunately, due to the corona situation, I have not been uh, able to sift through them uh, yet, and the description would uh, go far beyond the time frame anyway. In any case, however, it seems to be part of the shipment lost uh, of Texel. Jan Schmidt and Janus Wittkamp have already described um, this collection. But what happened to the numerous prints and manuscripts that Schulz mentions? I assume uh, that they became part of Schulz's private library. In fact, the auction catalog also mentions some manuscripts that Schulz is supposed to have brought from the Ottoman Empire, including a complete, complete nicely and accurately written Quran. However, the whereabouts of the manuscripts and prints from uh, this library are unclear. Um, only on the uh, mentioned Quran, I found the clue that uh, it should have been sold to Göttingen. In the last few minutes, I would like to talk about the purpose of the library. In the research li literature, it has been repeatedly pointed out that many projects in the context of Halle Pietism had multifaceted objectives. This also applies to the library of the Institutum Judaicum et Moamedicum. The sources reveal several very practical purposes uh, it served. The traveling staff uh, used uh, travel reports from, from the library to prepare for their trips and foreign language text editions, grammars, and lexicons for their language studies. Prints and manuscripts served as models for publications of the Institute's publishing house. As the director of the Institute, Kallenberg used the library for the strategic development of the institution, and as professor uh, at the University of Halle, he used it for his own research and also for his duties as a lecturer. But why did so many people donate books and manuscripts to the Institute? Here too, no simple answer can be given, especially since the motivations of the donors are most often not discernible. We can observe, for example, uh, an academic exchange of books and manuscripts between scholars. We encounter authors who wanted to market their already published works or to bring their text to print at all. There also was an uh, exchange between missionary institutions. Um, one should mention, for example, the uh, exchange of books between the Institute and the Society for Promoting Christian Knowledge in uh, London. Um, Christoph Bochinger recently addressed the fundamental question of what the Institute's objective was. He claimed that the most important motive was the, not the mission, but it was the documentation of indications for the fulfillment of a hope for better times, Hoffnung besserer Zeiten. With Pia Desideria, Philipp Jakob Spener wrote a text that was essential for pietism. In it, he announced the coming of a better time for the church, which contrasted with the expected near end uh, of the world in Lutheran theology, uh, Lutheran orthodoxy. The search for indications for the coming of this better time had an edifying function in pietism. 
This is not the place to discuss whether the statement as a whole uh, may be too one-sided. Uh, however, it cannot be rejected that inner pietist edification uh, was at last a very important aspect um, of the Institute's work. Against this background, the provision of prints and manuscripts by at least some of the donors can be understood as active work for the kingdom of God, Reich Gottes Arbeit, in analogy to the donation of money, spiritual assistance, uh, the provision of information and other services. Kallenberg also served as a multiplier who provided information about incoming books in his reports and often added quotations from the literature uh, he read. Especially, for example, reports about baptism of Jews and Muslims had edification value and satisfied the reader's need for evidence of the coming of better times. The library was thus more than just a resource for practical missionary work, uh, but functioned as a documentation center in a collective quest for edifying evidence. Donating books and uh, manuscripts finally could have an identificatory effect for donors connecting them to a circle of like-minded people. Thank you very much.